We start with overnight news about a big police SWAT standoff in the far northeast heights in Albuquerque. Take a look. This is what it was like for most of the night near Copper and Tramway. Police swarmed this area. They had a number of roads blocked off for quite some time. They say that there was a man threatening suicide and that caused the whole thing here. At one point, the SWAT team was out here in full gear with their guns out. You should know everything is cleared up now. The roads are all back open. Investigators have not said if that man actually had a weapon or a gun or if they arrested him or ended up taking him to the hospital. Well, the man accused of killing a woman during a drag race in Albuquerque last year has won an important motion in court. Police say Anthony Ramos was driving one of two cars drag racing down Central, speeding at nearly 100 miles an hour. The other driver, David Jansen, pled guilty to vehicular homicide in June. Both cars slammed into Tara Garcia's car. She was just 27 years old. Sadly, she died a few days later. She was a mom as well. Now, in court yesterday, Ramos and his attorney claimed that Tara was on her phone at the time of the crash. And we believe that uh, her cell phone records would be vital to determine whether or not she was using her cell phone at the time she was driving. Well, prosecutors did not like this. They argued there was nothing to show Tara was on her phone. However, the judge decided to allow the subpoena of her phone records. Tara's mother told us that she was shocked that Ramos would try to pin the blame on her daughter. The trial is set to get started February 3rd. We'll keep you updated. A judge has refused to suspend a sentence for a woman from Farmington accused of scamming local businesses out of thousands of dollars. According to the Farmington Daily Times, Shauna Tobin here will serve six months in jail for scamming more than $11,000 through a fake charity. Tobin had claimed the charity was for a family that was eating dog food to survive and had a child with a lot of medical problems. She was convicted earlier this year. Remember yesterday, we told you about a nonprofit group that says New Mexico State Lottery Scholarship Program is in some serious trouble, so much so that it could be just about out of cash by next school year. So we sent News 13's David Romero to see if that is really the case and see what college students have to say about this. He is live at UNM with all the details. So what'd you find out, David? Well, Matt, the, the New Mexico Voices for Children group estimates that there's only going to be about $300,000 left in the pot for qualifying students by next July. Now, the New Mexico Higher Education Department is not saying that they agree with that particular figure, but they do agree that something needs to be done to fix it. Now, that something has already been brought up to legislators this past year during the legislative session with no significant action taken. Now, in a letter this May from higher education officials, they indicated that this fall semester may be the last one where students can receive the scholarship funds in full by spring semester next year. That might not be the case. Now, as it stands already, the state has to cover, has had to cover rather, about a $20 million shortfall that the program is going through this year. Now, we spoke with lottery officials who say that their fiscal. Her, I think it should be based on grades mostly because people with financial need do usually qualify for Pell Grants and such. And I know that's a huge help to them because I've seen lots of people on that. Okay, I apologize for the technical difficulty there. We'll try to get checked back in with David in another hour. What he was saying, though, is that he talked with the lottery officials who say in their fiscal year of 2013, they pumped about $43.7 million into the fund. They also say that in the past six years, money going into the fund has been at its highest point since the program began in 1996. Still, with the number of qualifying students increasing throughout the state, the cost of school is going up, and you heard the students say there, they agree that the standards of getting the scholarship based on performance instead of financial need, they think they should stay the same. Now, the current grade point average standard for qualifying with a lottery scholarship is 2.5. Again, that is one thing that legislators have debated changing. There's a good chance they could debate this again coming up in January at the Roundhouse. We'll let you know how that goes. Should, you should know legislators did pass what's called a Senate memorial to start a group to look at ways of saving the lottery scholarship program and making it work more efficiently. Again, apologize for the technical problems there. 535 right now. Some of New Mexico's Head Start programs will be saved despite the federal budget cuts. More than 57,000 children nationwide have been cut from Head Start this fall because of the budget cuts. U.S. Senator Tom Udall from here in New Mexico says he helped get $5.5 million for the programs in Valencia, Socorro, Cibola, and McKinley counties. It's unclear yet what help, if any, Head Start programs in other parts of the state are going to get. Voters in Rio Rancho have voted against a proposal which would have slashed that city's higher education tax in half. 
Unofficial results from last night's election show 40% of people voted for it, while 60% voted against it. The tax supports UNM's West Campus and possibly a new school, a new campus between UNM and CNM. City Councilor there claims he would have put the funds toward the police and fire departments if the proposal had passed. Some say it was a debate against safety and smarts. About 10%, 10%, that is it, of all registered voters showed up to the polls. Well, happening now at 536, patients growing quite thin on finding an effective way to clean up millions of gallons of fuel that have seeped into the ground at Kirtland Air Force Base in Albuquerque. The state's environmental department will be addressing the Water Utility Board about that problem later today. The Air Force has a $50 million contract with an engineering firm to fix the fuel spill, and a new fuel extraction system that was unveiled in January was part of that, but that system is only burning half as many chemicals as expected, and it's been shut down a number of times because of mechanical issues. There's been $50 million appropriated for this, committed to this, and deadlines go by, and deadlines are not met. And we respect that, but I think it's again, you know, promises made, not seeing any activity. Um, I think that's where the frustration lies. The environmental department is expected to announce it'll be asking for more aggressive measures from Kirtland Air Force Base and the government study released back in July revealed that at that point the fuel had not reached water wells. Well, two animal advocacy groups are sponsoring an anti-horse slaughter billboard right in the middle of Roswell. The billboard has a picture right here of horses on it. It reads, please don't slaughter us. They're trying to spread the message. They obviously don't want Valley Meat to open its plant, which has sparked a big debate about slaughtering horses in the U.S. Roswell's leaders, as you can imagine, they hear about this each and every day. We've had a number of comments, complaints registered, not just from people locally, but from all around the country about the situation and people expressing their views and their sentiments about what is proposed to go on. As we've told you, a federal judge granted a temporary restraining order against Valley Meat earlier this month. The plan is being challenged by animal welfare groups. Of course, we'll let you know how that goes. We'll take a look. Three dogs rescued from horrifying conditions in Edgewood are now up for adoption. They were among 48 dogs taken a few months ago from the home of former, former veterinarian Deborah Clapton. Here are the three that are up for adoption. Absolutely adorable. Sadly, some of the dogs there were in such bad shape they had to be put down. Many have already been adopted out. So Fiona, Batman, and Superman, as they're now called, have been socialized with other dogs and are now up for adoption at Santa Fe Trails. Ms. Clapton is charged with dozens of counts of animal cruelty. Well, you know, Governor Susana Martinez has a big job leading the state, but her other full-time job, as we've told you, and maybe as you've seen, it's getting a lot of attention, not just here in New Mexico, but all across the country. And last night on special assignment, Katie Kim introduced us to the governor's older sister, Letty. She was born with cerebral palsy, and the governor became her legal guardian seven years ago. When the governor isn't in Santa Fe or traveling all around the country, she's in Las Cruces caring for Letty. I have to have a calendar that says this is where Chuck is going to be, this is where I'm going to be, this is where Letty's going to be, this is where when Letty gets picked up, who picks her up, how I get her to me, how I come to her. That sounds like a very busy job there, but one that she really takes to heart and enjoys. To watch the entire report, including more interviews, head to our website, krqe.com, or tune in tonight on Two Cause of Fox at 9 o'clock. I highly recommend you do that. It's a great story that Katie Kim and photographer Ryan O'Connor put together last night.